Greetings, everybody. Nick DiVirgilio here at the Yamaha booth, NAMM 2023, hanging out with Miles McPherson, a killer drummer, longtime session player, longtime touring drummer, Kelly Clarkson, Paramore, many others. Session player in Nashville for many years as well. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to uh, hang out with me for a little bit. Thank you. You've been a, you've been a longtime Yamaha player. Uh, tell us about your relationship with Yamaha and why you use these drums. I I love things that have been around longer than I have, because then I know that some other idiot has spent their life going, "Is this what I want? And is this how I do it?" And you know, <laughs> these drums have been around forever, and they're incredible. Um, it, it, and as you know, as a drummer, it's not just about the drums, it's about the relationship, it's about the support. Um, and yeah, the drums are incredible. And, and especially, you know, I don't know if you know, but they're doing the recording customs again. And it's not exactly what it was, but it's really cool. And I actually really enjoy the improvements they made. So yes, the drums are great, but the relationship is so huge. And you know, I mean, all these people are incredible. It's like a family. So I, I just, I wouldn't, I. Couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Awesome. Yeah. And how long have you been with the company? 2009. And what's the, what what line of the drums do you use mostly? Um, I've got a I've got a, a kit that was made for me that was I guess they would call it it was the Birch Custom and the Maple Custom. Yeah. Um, but I have a Maple Kick. It's a 24 by 18, which was an accident. It was supposed to be a 2416 and I got scared when it showed up and it was the, the greatest sounding bass drum I've ever heard. Yeah. It's incredible. So I've got a 2418 maple and then 13, 16, 18 and they're birch toms. Okay. But it's all the silver sparkle so it looks like it's one kit. But nice. somebody that knows things that I don't know told me I should do that and I did it and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's an incredible combo. Now, being a longtime session player in Nashville, you play all kinds of music. I mean, Nashville is not just a country town right. anymore, right? So you're playing all style, kinds of styles of music. Do you have a huge collection of drums you use for a lot of your sessions, no. or you bring in a ton of stuff, or no? What, what's your kind of your operation usually when you go into a session? A lot of guys in the '90s, the session scene was almost about how much could you bring, like how much stuff did you have, and you know, especially in LA. I, I remember seeing what guys would bring and it was unbelievable. That's why you would have like Garfield and you know, those companies that would do it. I have one kit in Cartage. One. I have, um, I've got an old 60s Slingerland stackable little kit that's like a 18 inch kick drum, 10 inch tom, 14 inch tom that all just goes in there. And I can set that up with the hardware that I have, the Yamaha hardware that I have. So I technically have two kits, but I use that kit that I told you about on 99% of what I do. Okay. Yeah, it's great. It's <laughs> such a good kit. Yeah. And what's the session scene for you these days? How's it going? After COVID and all the, the going down and coming back up, what's it like for you? Well, what was crazy is um, COVID changed everything. Um, I worked more that year than I've ever worked ever. And that was all at home. Um, so now, since COVID, I've, I've, I very intentionally only book about half my week doing sessions in a conventional studio in Nashville, and then the other half is at home. That's great. I love it. Now, you're born and raised in Nashville, right? You're a native. Not born, but raised, yeah. Okay. So uh, you've seen that that town has expanded and changed a lot over the years, and the scene. So how, how have you seen the scene change, like the session scene change as from when you were little up to uh, this point in your life? It's, it's gotten a lot harder to get in because all the musicians like moving there <laughs> everybody knows yeah. the secret's out right. and you know unfortunately not only was the secret out but it was cheap real estate it was lots of opportunities for people to make money in nashville other than just music so it's now become this town that's overrun with really good musicians and so to get in it's not just about being good anymore you have to be great you know you have to it and with Nashville, it's not even, playing is half of it. It's about just being a good hang and knowing how our little system works. Because Nashville's different than other places. I don't know if you've tracked in Nashville and LA, but it's it's not the same process. No, I've had a few, I've had a few sessions in, in Nashville, not a ton over my career, but I definitely have experienced some you of what it's all about. Life. You bet. And the relationships, same in LA, it's, it's hugely important. Let's move this way for a second. <laughs> I wonder why. This is a great looking drum kit, so it's a good place See? to stand anyway. Yeah. 
Well, and so this takes me to what you're up to now with um, David and the Studio Musician Academy. Yes, indeed. Teaching, teaching young folks or even older folks what it's like to be a studio musician and kind of the, some of the tools you need to navigate that yeah. field. Can you Which, tell us about that? Yeah, and I almost, I like to think of it less like teaching and it's, it's more about just lifting the veil on something that's never really been something that anyone can just see what the process looks like and how it works. And so the idea is to just strip away all of the, the smoke and mirrors of us kind of hiding in a studio and not really letting people know how we got this final product. And there's a lot to it. As, as you know, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of thought that goes into parts, gear, how you deal with the artist, how you deal with the producer, how you deal with the other players. Like, there's so many facets of our job that are completely hidden from public view that we just kind of, we're proud of it and we want to spread it and we want to share it. And for those of us that got lucky enough to get in there, it's because somebody did that for us on a level that was pre-YouTube or pre, you know, they brought us into a session and that just doesn't happen as much anymore. It's kind of a, it's getting more exclusive and a little more closed door. And so we're, we just want to have, there's so many great players and the more kids and young people that come in, the better off we're going to be. So like, we're just trying to help the next generation of guys like us have a better advantage coming in than we did. You know, just trying to give somebody a leg up. Totally. Yeah. Cause yeah, for sure. People did that for me. I, I had mentors that helped me out for sure. And I'm sure you did as well. You have to. Thank you so much. This is great. The gear is awesome. Your career is really cool, man. If you haven't followed Miles' career, definitely check out everything he's done. There's, a, You've done a lot of stuff. And uh, thanks for hanging out and taking the time. Wish you all the best with Studio Musician Academy. And we want to get you guys all up to Sweetwater to hang out sometime. And uh, yeah. we'll do some, we'll make some content up there and hang out. It'd be awesome. great. I think you dig it. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Miles. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.